because her parents told her and me to buy some, you know, groceries, some, I don't know, tunas, and laughing from that, that, oh, they will eat this tuna for years, because we didn't believe. Russians came, thanks, why you didn't leave? All of them bursting in tears and saying, we don't know where, we have nowhere to go, nobody is waiting for us, because it's their home, and they really have nowhere to go. So I guess that's what we are fighting for. Hi guys, it's Tanya and this is the fifth episode of Project DIM. Today we're going to talk about refugees. After Russia started its invasion of Ukraine 24th of February, over 14 million border crossings from Ukraine to other countries were recorded as of October 2022. Most of refugees fled to Poland. 90% of Ukrainian refugees are women and children. Ukrainian men aged 18 to 60 years old are banned from leaving the country. And today we're going to hear three different stories, friends of mine, who've been forced to leave their homes. Okay, guys, so this is Vastelina. Here I know her over three years. Hi, dear. <laughs> Long time we didn't see you. How are you now? Oh, I want to say fine, but it will be a big liar, so... Yeah. <laughs> We're all in this shit together. I prepared some questions for you. And first question is about your first day, 24th of February. How it was, how was your morning, uh, and how you realized that war is starting? To make the picture full, before I had so hard uh, working weeks, and this day had to be my day off, and from my man also, so we planned such a sweet chill morning, but instead of that, we woke up around 5 a.m. because of call of my man's mom, which was in panic, probably in tears, crying like, Keith is bombing, where are you, how are you, and we just opened in our eyes. We was confused. We didn't understand what she's talking about. It, it seemed like real, some bad joke, I don't know. After we looked outside, everything seemed normal because in that area there wasn't explosion at that time. I was in Kiev. Uh, my hometown is Kharkiv, but for the last six years I live in Kiev and in district of my home there was a silence. We opened the news, the messages and realized that yes, Russia attacked our country. Uh, after that, honestly, I don't remember so much because you didn't understand where, where to run and what to do and life didn't prepare us for the war. So I guess my mind kind of turned off and my man ruled the process. We pack some backpacks, since for our cat, and then we go outside to take some cash, take some food and when we went outside, I was shocked because it seemed like we are in some ap apocalyptic movie because all people on the street were rushing in panic and nobody understand what is going on. And from that moment, real horror had begun. A week before, uh, a lot of people say that on 16th of February, Russia will attack Ukraine. And on that day, we was laughing with my best friend because her parents told her and me to buy some, you know, groceries, some, I don't know, tunas, yes, some lights, uh, candles, some, some things like that, to prepare the backpacks. But we was going on some shooting and laughing from that, that, oh, they will eat this tuna for years, because we didn't believe. When did we decide to evacuate? I spent in Kiev around like maybe 10 days, something like that. From the very beginning, I didn't want to leave Ukraine. I didn't want to leave my home, because what the fuck I have to go away from here? From the very beginning, on the first day, we were sure that it's still kind of joke. It's not serious and it will end in a few days at least at few weeks, but our home is near Gostomil, Bucha and Derpin. And every day explosions become more stronger and louder. All the news that about explosions from my home i saw how our air airplane maria was burning i even was shooting that and posted that on my story we even didn't hear that explosion because it was really far but the fire was so strong because it's the hugest airplane in the world so only maybe on the next day we saw that it was maria and realized that ah yeah it's there uh, oh damn yeah we saw how maria was burning 
The final point for me was when my friends who was in Bucha and the Rupin firstly wrote to me that it's a hell there, tanks are shooting all around the street, but after they didn't reply at all. They weren't online and at that moment I felt real danger and started to panic. And my mom moved to Czech before war so from the very first day so of course she was begging me to come to her so when i started to panic and when i become really scared i didn't choose country i just wanted to save my life the biggest problem was about maybe i even was ready to leave my home yet i wasn't ready to leave my love to leave my man because man couldn't go away from country and my man didn't want to go to DZ. he also wanted to join some army or something like that. If I go, I go alone. He will stay here. When we started, when I started to cry, when I started to shake and I didn't sleep, I was super stressed and we started a conversation about it's better to go for me. I even didn't take that decision because at that time was meeting of Ukrainian Russian Russian delegation and we was also joking that we also had this uh, meeting b- between me and my man uh, and we had first round second round third round conversation about do we have to leave what we have to do and uh, I remember that on the third or fourth round the final one he told me like okay tomorrow you go to Czech I go to Kharkiv region and I was like no we didn't we didn't sign that but he said no you go and I go that's the only way of course of course I want to come back home it's it's the only thing I'm dreaming now about and uh, for sure I will come when we will win that Russian murders but sometimes I even think that I can come early because you know like maybe once or a month or once a few months I have uh, depression I have tears all day long about I want to come back to my home to my life to my love to to my friends and uh, I even think that I can come back a little bit earlier than we will win this war because actually it's also so hard to be in here when you don't want to because like uh, if talking about what is the most difficult of being here now. Before I was working in different countries with different nationalities, so I am okay with communication, with uh, feel myself fine in other countries, but now I'm here not because of my own wish. And also when you feel some rudeness from Europeans, it can, it hurts me so much. Yeah, of course, a lot of people is super kind to us. A lot of Europeans help Ukrainians so much, but from some people I really feel anger, like um, because we are here, because of us, prices are rising, but then, guys, it's happened not because of me here, it's happened not because of Ukraine, it's happened because of Russia, so we are not guilty in that, and people really angry for us sometimes, but they even don't have idea how much we would like to not take their space how much we would like to come back home. So that seems, you know, I'm bursting in tears here about so silly things, about so stupid moments, not because of these moments, just because every fucking day I'm waking up and I realize that I won't wake up in Ukraine. I won't wake up in my bed and I don't want to be here because it's a huge difference when you choose to come here because you wanted to or you just have to, to save your life. I just want to ask, how do you feel about this word refugees? Are you consider yourself as a refugee? Mm, you know, I understand that uh, actually, yeah, I'm a refugee. Yeah, because I left my country. I'm hiding from war in another one. But maybe because of my mom is here. Yeah, I feel my. It's really so strange feeling for me. You know, on the first weeks after that huge cold. Uh, and then, I don't know, shocked road to the Czech Republic with my cat at winter. When I came, you know, I remember the first evening I was sitting here with my mom and I just had some strange feelings that I just come to my mom, yeah, for a weekend, but stayed a little bit When I was uh, coming here to Czech in the train from Lviv to Przemysl, to Poland, we were sitting on the floor with Granny, really old one woman. She is around like maybe 70, 80 years, something like that. And we started a conversation. This woman also was from Kharkiv and she was with a small, you know, that small woman back. And she told me that this back, this one, yeah, it's the only thing 
is that she had time to take with her while while she was leaving her home, and uh, and that story really really break my heart. And then I guess I will never forget this granny because I realized that person, yeah, adult, so adult person, she lost all her life, all her life is ruined, and everything that she have now is. A small bag. I I really hope that everything went go- good for her. But all the time I'm thinking about you know these old people. Because for us, for 20, 30 years people, it's easier. Because at least we have phones. Yeah, we have information about volunteers, about how to get somewhere, where, which country, how can help you with work or something. But old people don't have some of them even phones. And they realize that that woman she was going to nowhere. She was just trying to survive and. I really, I can't imagine how she is living now. And some people, especially in Europe, yes, especially now, starting to speak about, oh, maybe Ukraine just have to leave the lands, yeah, and live in peace. We are for peace in the whole world and blah, blah, blah. So maybe Ukraine, not, not Russia, yeah, Ukraine is better to start this war and uh, give their land. Sometimes I also thinking about, yeah, so many people dying, so maybe it will be better. But then I realized that when we've seen video from the occupied territories here yeah, like for example now is Izum, Kupiansk in uh, Kharkiv region and there is so much old people and when uh, reporters asking them about why you didn't leave yeah Russians came tanks why you didn't leave all of them bursting in tears and saying we don't know where we have nowhere to go nobody is waiting for us because it's their home and they really have nowhere to go so I guess that's what we are fighting for, not for 20 years old people yeah, who will not be satisfied with Russia and okay, they can go to another. We are fighting for at least our grand- grannies, yeah, at least our parents who have their home and they have to live at their homes in peace and not hiding anywhere because of that stupid Russia. Now kind of trend uh, in TikTok that I don't remember which rapper is that like everybody is asking me what is gonna me what is gonna be if I'm not win. I guess we'll never know. <laughs> That's it. We'll never know because for sure Ukraine will win. It's just a question of time. Anybody want to know what I would do if I didn't win? I guess we'll never know.